friends, it's Jennifer from Live, Laugh, Love to Read. Today I'm going to be doing a book review on Elizabeth Berg. We are all welcome here. So I recently discovered Elizabeth Berg and I'm slowly making my way through her books and I am loving her books. They are like... I think they're pretty, they're moving, and they, they just want to, they're just those feel-good books, you know? Just feel-good books. I like them. Um, so, let me show you my new shirt. So, I just ordered this one, Life is Good, and I hope you can see it on there. It's got um, book pages floating around, flowers, the book right there. Oh, I love it. I just, I just ordered it. Uh, for fall because um, I've lost weight and none of my long sleeve shirts fit. So I'm having to build them back up. And this is a size large. I used to wear a size 2X, uh, especially in Life is Good shirts. I I love Life is, Life is Good t-shirts. Um, they're kind of, they used to be an obsession of mine. I'm not as obsessed as I was. <laughs> but yeah, 2X to a large. I'll take it. <laughs> so, let's just get started. So, this book, like I said, gave me all the feels. I really liked it. Um, so, this one we follow um, Paige Dunn, which is the mother, and then Diana, who is 14, and she's the daughter. So, um, it is the summer of 1964 in Tupelo, Mississippi, the town of Ellis's birth which I have been to, and uh, what took me there actually was we were on our way to Peach, Peach Tree City, Georgia, and we stopped there on the way, and we stayed there in Tupelo in a, hot, a uh, hotel. We ate good Mexican food there. We um, actually seen two, two or three, I want to say three um, little free libraries while we were there, so, yeah, it's a cute little town, Tupelo, Mississippi. Let's see. Tensions are mounting over civil rights demonstrations occurring ever more frequently and violently across the state. But in Paige Dunn's small ramshackle house, there are more immediate concerns. Challenged by the effects of the polio she contracted during her last month of pregnancy, Paige is nonetheless determined to live as normal a life as possible and to raise her daughter, Diana, in the way she sees fit, with the support of her tough-talking black caregiver, PC. So, Paige is um, a single mother. She contracted polio. Now, you have to remember this is in 1964. She contracted polio when uh, she was nine months pregnant. They put her in the iron lung, and she actually gave birth in the iron lung. Yeah. Um, who is Diana, who is now 14. So, Diana is trying in her own fashion to live a normal life. As a 14-year-old, she wants to make money for clothes and magazines <laughs> to slough off the authority of her mother and PC to figure out the puzzle that is boys and to escape the oppressiveness she sees everywhere in her small town. So PC is their black um, caretaker. She's the daytime caretaker for her mother because Paige, the mother, cannot move anything but her head, her mouth and stuff. She can feel everything else, but she can't, but she's paralyzed. So she has to have a caretaker 24-7. So PC is there during the day, and then they have another one, Mrs. I want to say Mrs. Gruder, uh, till like 5 to 10. And then overnight... They don't have anybody, even though they're supposed to. But Diana, since she was 10, does everything for her mother in the middle of the night. Uh, let's see. What she can... Let's see. Da, 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 da. Nor can she escape her ongoing responsibility to assist in caring for her mother. Paige Dunn is attractive, charming, intelligent, and lively. But her needs are great and relentless. So, yeah, Paige has to have... Uh, like I said, 24-7 help. She can only do things with her mouth. And one of the things that she does, she allows PC to spank Diana from it. I mean, she she has been um, <clears throat> like a second mother to Diana since she was born. 
So, <clears throat> she allows her to spank her. She uses a wooden spoon. Yeah. Um, and another thing that um, her mother does that um, when she wants to discipline her, she does something with her mouth, and I'm not going to tell you what it is because I don't want to give it away. But it's interesting. Yeah, to say the least. <laughs> As the summer unfolds, hate and adversity will visit this modest home. Despite the difficulties thrust upon them, each of the women will find her own path to independence, understanding, and peace. And Diana's mother, so mightily compromised, will end up giving her daughter an extraordinary gift few parents could match. So, yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, Diana has a best friend. Her name is Shirley. And she lives on the street from her. They put on little plays and such. And which I find kind of weird because they're supposed to be like 14 years old. But they kind of still play like they're younger. And I don't know if that's because it's 1964 and girls played different back then maybe. I don't know. But I found that kind of strange that they would put on plays and they would charge like, you know, a quarter or 50 cents for people to come watch it. Yeah, I don't know. But then you got on the other hand where Diana takes care, helps take care of her mother, and I'm talking everything. Uh, so they put she, and Diane or uh, Paige, the mother, is very beautiful. She, her, you know, she's got the womanly figure still. She's got she's a very beautiful woman, and so they actually put her in her bikini and put her out in the yard so she can sunbathe. Yeah, um, she is hooked up to a respirator at all times except for. They can unhook her for like an hour, I think is as long as she can be unhooked. And then she, she does something what Diana calls the frog breathing. So it's a certain kind of breathing that she does that she can do on her own. But otherwise, she's hooked up to a respirator. So, yeah. This book, I really enjoyed it. I'm giving it four stars. And like I said, I'm slowly making my way through Elizabeth Berg's books. Her books, I, I just like them. They're really good. Um, I think I'm in that mo that mode right now, that reading mode where I like the feel good books and not so much the thrillers and the, um, murder and such, you know, I don't know, but this was really good. Like I said, four stars, I'd highly recommend it and make sure you check back because I have lots more videos coming up. Um, yeah, the, uh, somebody dropped off. I got like a really big um, haul of books that um, someone dropped in the Little Free Library bin. And there's like mm, maybe 20 books and they're all really good. Um, I keep a bin behind my Little Free Library with a lid on it, like a roommate tote um, for donations. And a lot of times um, there'll be good stuff in it, you know, mainly kid stuff and such. And there'll be um, every once in a while... Um, hardbacks, um, uh, sometimes there's trash, unfortunately, um, <laughs> just weed through it and I go out there and I clean it out and yeah, um, but most of the time good, there's pretty good stuff. If it's something that I can't use in the little free library, um, <clears throat> then I donate it to my thrift store. Um, if it's beyond even what they would take. Like, occasionally I'll get mildewed or wet books, and I just throw those away. Yeah. I don't know where I'd re... I guess I could recycle them, but I'm not sure where. But anyhow. Uh, but most of the stuff is really good. Um, and it cycles through my little free library uh, four to five times. And then I either take it to the little free libraries in Tulsa, and I um, go through there. Um, or I'll donate them to my thrift store. And that's what I do. So yeah, coming up is my next, uh, next video I'll be having. I'll probably split that one into two because there's so many books. Um, and yeah, that's what's coming up. So don't forget to check back. If you like this video, give me a like and a subscribe. And that's all I have for today. Thanks friends. I'll see you next time.